Gentlemen, we have something of great import to discuss this day. Bloody hell, Fenric, I was just about to go down the pub. I've entered into a plonkers tournament with Uncle Bennett. Who the fuck is Uncle Bennett? Well, he's a fiery titan that comes from Sheffield. Lovely bloke, he- Never bloody mind about Uncle Frankie. We've got issues with a suspicious fluid delivery system. It seems someone has been selling a knockoff product on our turf. It's Uncle Benny, not Uncle. Oh, give it a rest, Cumrag. No one cares about your stupid friend. We need to find out who this mysterious fluid peddler is. Indeed. We need to talk to Semington Corralman. He's apparently had a run-in with this ne'er-do-well. Calls himself Green Daddy, apparently. The sheer bum-fucking nerve of it. Trying to usurp us? The who is it? Indeed. Let us make our way down from the tower and head over to, to the semi-corral. We need to find this green daddy and make him pay. Great. I'm with Mr. Plunkers now. I can't believe this is so unfair. Welcome to Shark Select. <laughs> Welcome to Shard Select, recorded on location from the shed at the bottom of the wizard's tower. This episode is sponsored by Master Wizard's transparent robes. Don't be a square, lay it all bare. Yeah, thanks for that Master Fenric, and thanks for joining us on Shard Select, as he said. I am Winstolf, and I am joined by the grace of the gods, by Ryan. Hello. And Stu. Hello. And here we are. A week after our fateful interview with Emmett Lafave. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying we've hit the big time now, but we have. Uh, that was good, wasn't it, guys? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was terrified. I was a nervous wreck going in because it's like, oh my god. Oh my god, it's a, it's a famous YouTuber and musician. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Uh, I thought I'd be all like fucking bumbling Br British prick like Hugh Grant. I probably was. I say Hugh Grant, like one of Hugh Grant's roles. Maybe it's a bit unfair to say Hugh Grant's a bumbling prick. I don't know. I don't know the man. He seems quite clever. But <clears throat> anyway, yeah. Let me tell you about Shark Select. <clears throat> we are a weekly gaming podcast recorded under orders by a bunch of worryingly bizarre wizards who live in a firm, satisfyingly rigid tower. If you enjoy the show, please don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever other podcast service you use to help us reach more people. If you'd like to contact us with any ideas, feedback, or just for a lovely chat, then we can be found at Chart Select Pod on Twitter and all other socials, including YouTube. We also have a Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash Chart Select, where you pledge to gain access to our extra drip tray episodes, along with various other gubbins. With that said, let's get in there. Balls deep. Yeah, so here we are, it's Chart Select time once again. How are my lovely, lovely hosts, co-hosts today? You all good? Yeah. 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 All Sorry, right. I'm just taken aback by the massive fucking spike in listens we've just had. Well, it's because... Yeah, thank you very much. It's because Ryan released his dick pics on Instagram. So naturally, everyone's like, oh, hello. Want to see more of these? Let's follow Shout Select. I think that's, that's what's happened, isn't it, Ryan? Yeah, it must be. Ryan's like, oh no, it was an accident. I can't delete them. Like, we all know what you're doing, Ryan. I'm sure there's a, another logical reason, but. <laughs> you reckon? Yeah. Maybe the uh, wizards. Maybe got... someone's. A couple of people have just binged listen to loads. Maybe. Or maybe the wizards have got have built some homunculi that just sit listening to our podcast all day. Like bots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bots, essentially, yeah. <laughs> bots made of old flesh and the things they found in graveyards. I know in the Wizards they probably have sex toys for arms or something, but you know what they're fucking like. Terrible, aren't they? So before we start, guys, there's something I want to talk to you about, which I found on Twitter the other night. Um, Someone's made a list. I don't know if it's fake or not, but I hope it is. What kind of gamer are you? Yeah? <clears throat> it's got three tiers. They've got new school, old school, and ancient gamer. 
And I've got pictures of various Jokers from movies next to them. So New School's got that fucking awful Jared Leto Joker. <sighs> I'm rubbing my eyes just thinking about it. Oh, man. Old School's got Heath Ledger Joker. <sighs> and Ancient Gamer has got Jack Nicholson Joker, yeah? Just to give you some idea. Now, let me just list what kind of games are on each tier and just see how quickly you get angry, because I got fucking raging at this, like, weirdly so. New School, Fortnite. Okay, fair enough, I suppose. Yeah, a lot of young gamers play Fortnite. At first, I was like, yeah, that makes sense, yo. Next up, PUBG. I mean, yeah, with me so far, guys. Even though that came out in 2015, is that really that new? Yeah, I guess. I mean, do people still play it anymore? Yeah. Do they? That's all right, then. I saw it was it, it was free on PS Plus this month. Um, I didn't buy it. I didn't download it, even. But it's there. <laughs> Clash of Clans. Does anyone still play Clash of Clans? A mobile game. Yeah, it's a mobile game. It's like a wait 24 it's hours and we'll let you do something. It's not a fucking real game. game, then, is it? I don't think it is. I, I agree with you, right? What's your thoughts on that, Stu? I, yeah, I thought it was just like a fucking idle nonsense. Idle thing. nonce game? Maybe it is. Yeah. Uh, Far Cry 5! <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is Far Cry 5 new school? It's following the same Far Cry formula that's been around for years, and I don't think it's played by the same kind by, like... I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it belongs in that class. I don't, I don't get it. And finally, Overwatch, which I've never played and I never want to play, but it does seem like maybe it does belong on that list. That's not that. That's 2016, anyway. Yeah, even then, yeah, it's four years ago. I mean, yeah, it's mm. not that fucking new school, is it? Now, on to old school. Stay with me now, guys. Modern Warfare 2. Old school. 2009. It's not fucking that old, is it? Fucking old school. League of Legends. Old. I don't know much about League mm. of Legends, but is it old school? No. Hmm. What about Angry Birds? That's a mobile game, so they can fuck off. It's fucking well old. I would agree completely. Black Ops 2. What's that? 2010. Something like that, isn't it? And Bioshock Infinite. (laughs) Why Bioshock Infinite? (laughs) It's like like so arbitrary. What if you've never played any of those games? You're not classed as anything then? No, you're just like a non-existent Joker. You're not not a gamer then, no. Just not a gamer. No, I guess not. (laughs) You'd be the Lego Joker. (laughs) Yeah, like the arbitrary list makers of the internet do not see you as a gamer. <laughs> and finally, hold it. This is the one that annoyed me the most: ancient gamer. Ancient. Just that spot of time on this ancient gamer. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe, I don't know, like eight bit era, um, maybe sixteen bit. If people are being particularly cheeky, Halo Three. <laughs> Halo Three, two thousand and seven, Xbox three sixty. That's not ancient. Who's making these fucking lists? Gears of War. What, what, what year did that come out? 2006? Yeah, six, yeah. It's not that fucking old. Call of Duty 4? Which one was yes, Call of Duty 4? Uh, the one, Modern, Modern Warfare. Warfare. Yeah, the first one. Again, it's not, uh, it's not ancient. What's that, that's, what's that, 07? Yeah, like particularly <laughs> cheeky people might say Call of Duty 1 was ancient at this point because it's yeah, yeah, ancient. It doesn't even mention any of the Call of Duties before Modern Warfare. Well, oh. Well, hold on to your dicks, people, because Fallout fucking 3. Fallout 3? That's not ancient. You ever play Fallout 1? That's, That's ancient. ancient yeah. yeah. Portal. Yeah, so basically, there's like three years difference between uh, ancient and. Like old school gamer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What the fuck? And it's then like, there's this bit at the end. Ancient is 2006 to 2009. <laughs> ancient is 2009 to 2011. And then new school is 2015 onwards. What the fuck. <laughs> Who makes these fucking lists? <laughs> like a 12 year span. Yeah. Anything before that, non existent. These little gatekeeping bastards making these lists. And then there's a bit at the end, which was so funny that I asked Master Fenric to read it out for us and he's recorded it. Do you want to hear it? I'll just play it, hang on. Whether young or old, brand new or classic, we are all gamers. We snipe our enemies, complete our quests, and most of all, we get shit done. I guess what I'm trying to say is, don't hype, don't full stop, mess full stop, with full stop, us full stop. What is that edgelord shit? It's just cringe, isn't it? Oh my god, it is so bad. I nearly fucking ate my phone out of pure cringiness when I saw that. It actually made my actually made my testicles retract up into my pelvis. Right then. So, I guess that was... I mean, Stuart, is there anything you wanted to mention before we get stuck here? 
Only Thomas the Crank Engine. Yes, I mean, I feel this needs, this needs exploring again, doesn't it? So if you rewind the clocks back to when we first got kidnapped by the wizards, and they didn't want everyone to know that, that they existed, this was the first thing they made us talk about. Right back on episode one of Shark Select, wasn't it? Yeah, it but it's, it's a slightly really modified big. version, because that was originally just like a recasting of Thomas, where we like... Yeah, cast. that's right. Actually. That was basically yeah. the film train spotting, but the actors were <laughs> trained from Thomas <laughs> the Tank Engine. That's right, yeah. So go on, Stu, what's this, what, what's this angle? Yeah, so Thomas the Crank Engine's a version I've come up with, where Thomas... It's like a mixture of speed and crank, so he's, he has to stay above 50 miles, 50 miles an hour, or he explodes. Yep. <laughs> um, and obviously, because he's a train, he has to keep his fire up, so yeah. I'm linking that to adrenaline. So this is like headbutt, I mean, Clarabelle and stuff to like... <laughs> run um, over cows, that kind yeah, of run thing. run over cows to keep his adrenaline up. <laughs> he's like truck. speeding around the Isle of Sodor and stuff, and like Harold's like the TV helicopter and stuff. <laughs> the trucks are all like, oh, what are you going to do, Thomas? Fuck you, man! He just runs into him and kills them. Yeah. Just the truck's face is on the ground like a, like a tray going... Ugh. It's, it's life, <laughs> really. As its life leaves it, as its life blood, the trains do these trains bleed? I assume. Yeah, they do. I reckon they're made of meat, aren't they? Probably. Yeah, yeah just meat trains, aren't they? Whilst Thomas just really goes around and round the outside track, just screaming, attacking things. <laughs> but at some point, something goes wrong and he gets on the inside track. Yeah, and he goes no one's safe massive there. station up for some reasons on the Isle of Sodor. Yeah, and Toby, the wooden train, he dies. He gets fucking mown through like a shed. Yeah, goes through. <laughs> Yeah. Like that caravan at the start of Mad Max, he just goes fucking through it. <laughs> <laughs> and at some point, at some point, he gets air off a ramp and takes out Harold. Yeah, like that bit in Die Hard Five where he fires a taxi at a helicopter. No, Die yeah. Hard Four that was, wasn't it? <laughs> Who's the baddie? Diesel. Um, or would it be someone you don't expect, like Percy? No, I don't think. I think not from Percy. Maybe, um, maybe James. He's like a yeah. shit boy, isn't he? So I think that's the twist. Like you think it's Diesel all the way through, and when he's got Diesel on the ropes, like maybe he runs into Diesel, but they're facing each other, and he's pushing Diesel along backwards, and Diesel's like, you know, it's not really me. I'm just a henchman. I'm just a henchman. Who is it? It's fucking James. It's James. <laughs> just as he, Dick Jones. Dick yeah, Jones. <laughs> like uh, Clarence Bodicary Robocop. Yeah. <laughs> you can't kill me. You're you're a train. <laughs> And then they go too fast around the corner and Diesel falls off a cliff and just explodes. And the last thing you see is his face coming up out of the explosion like a shot from above just going, ah! Then it falls back <laughs> into the fire. Ah! What do you reckon? Yeah. <laughs> we need to film this. <laughs> Would Jason yeah. Statham be voicing Thomas? If it's yeah, I reckon so, yeah. Yeah. Get him fucking way. <laughs> Get him way, James. <laughs> Fuck you, James. <laughs> So Thomas the Crank Engine, when's it coming out? Hopefully soon. I hope so, yeah. Just drop any other movies that you're working on and get Thomas the Crank Engine out. You'll get views. If they're making another Star Wars, just drop that. Everyone will whinge about it anyway. Make Thomas the Crank Engine instead. Whew, that was good, that, Stu. Thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah, you're welcome. That was a fun surprise to be talking about. You know what else is always a fun surprise, but not technically a surprise here on Shark Select? No. It's Ryan's surprise, everyone. It's Ryan's surprise. It's when Ryan comes on and he's got a surprise. Ooh. Yeah. He reaches into his meaty bag of surprises. And after much slopping and slurping, he pulls out a surprise. Yeah. What's a surprise, Ryan? It's an AI written script. <gasps> the, AI, the AI's been writing your new scripts again. He has, yeah. I've heard it's been off duty for a while. How did you get yeah, some work? Yeah, it down. Let's just give it some new material. So oh, it's, right. uh, it's an AI written horror story. Ooh. Quick question. Mm. Do you have to put the material on three and a half inch floppy disks? Yeah. Just I don't want to know that. Oh, fair enough. Mm -hmm. so, go on then. Three and a half inch floppy disks? You could use those if you want. There is a separate drive for that. How yeah. is it? You put, yeah, you, I hear you put it in, you hear a lot of. Yeah. Yeah. It hurts as well. Yeah, don't do that, Stu. It's a bad idea. Just use the floppy disk drive. Yeah. yeah there's actually uh, inside the floppy, floppy disk drive, there's um, like four wheels. All spinning. Oh, okay. So as you go in, it sucks you in. Oh, God. It tries to pull you in, yeah. Well, and doesn't let go. Yeah, yeah. Don't like the sound of that. I didn't uh, want but, that. You, but, when, but if you manage to get out, you, 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 you then have like a seven and a half inch floppy dick. Because it's, it's 
distended it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't wonder what, what the exhaust chute was for at the back of it as well. He has no idea. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. One with Ryan surprise. So, the damp knife. Ooh. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Mavis Norris had always loved cosy Cape Town with its fresh, famous fields. <laughs> it was a place where she felt shocked. Okay. She was a greedy, smelly beer drinker with wobbly fingernails and grubby toenails. Her friends saw her as a pickled, plain painter. Okay. Once, she had even saved a confused old lady that was stuck in a drain. That's the sort of woman she was. Hang on, sorry. That's the sort of woman he was. Oh, okay. Mm. Fair enough. Mavis walked over to the window and reflected on her quiet surroundings. The rain hammered like bouncing mice. (laughs) Then she saw something in the distance, or rather, someone. It was a figure of Roy Rock... Rock and... Rockatansky. Roy Rockatansky? Yeah, yeah. Roy was a remarkable patient with charming fingernails and wobbly toenails. (laughs) Mavis gulped. She was not prepared for Roy. (laughs) As Mavis stepped outside and Roy came closer, she could she could see the giant glint in his eye. I am here because I want a pencil, Roy bellowed in his brave tone. <laughs> he slammed his fist against Mavis' Mavis's chest with the force of 9,443 hamsters. <laughs> I friggin' love you, Mavis Norris. Mavis looked back, even more surprised, and still fingering the damp knife. Roy, I am your mother. He, she replied. Hmm. This might get a bit weird. Okay. <clears throat> they looked at each other with irritable feelings, like two gentle, glorious giraffes sleeping <laughs> in a very funny wake, which had orchest- or- orchestral music playing in the background and two mean uncles running to the beat. <laughs> Suddenly, Roy lunged forward and tried to punch Mavis in the face. (coughs) Quickly, Mavis grabbed the damp knife and brought it down on Roy's skull. Roy's charming fingernails trembled as his wobbly toenails wobbled. He looked active, his body raw like a bad brawny buck. (laughs) Then then he let out an agonising groan and collapsed to the ground. Moments later, Roy rock rock at... Tansky was dead. Mavis Norris went back inside and made herself a nice drink of beer. The end. That was very good. I like the bit about the giraffes at the wake. Mm. That was, uh... it was a bit weird, wasn't it? That was good, though. I see the AI the AI has really uh, outshone itself this time. It's, don't, don't yeah, it's definitely it. trying, isn't it? Mm. I forgot to tell you guys, by the way, I got, I got some video footage of someone using the, uh, the three and a half inch Dick's Drive uh, mm. from the CCTV whilst Ryan was reading that. Do you want to play it back for you? Yeah. Here we go. <clears throat> Just clearing my throat because it, obviously it's hard work to press play on this thing. Hello, Ryan. Yeah, put it in. Put it in. Oh, oh, yeah, daddy. Oh, yeah, daddy. In. Ah, 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 ah. I am finished. Fuck. That was quite sexual, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Is that Ryan or Ryan's? Uh, I couldn't quite. Up. I couldn't quite tell. Should you play it back in slow motion? Just that one word. Yeah. Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> it was you. It was me. That's why. And you told us you didn't use it. No, I said for you not to use it. Oh, because you have a thing going on with the AI. Mm-hmm. No wonder you get all the best scripts, you little tinker. <laughs> Stu's jealous now. I can hear him burning with rage. I know. I hope it's have a go. No, well, you can't, because uh, he's going steady with the AI. You can't yes. get in there. Uh, you can be invited to the wedding, at least. Oh, don't know about that. <laughs> All the other AIs are. Skynet's going to be there. So, uh, Hal yeah. going? Eh? Hal going? Yeah, it's Hal 9000 going. I'm not, gonna, not, getting, not marrying the thing. Oh, well, that's just a bit harsh. That's just a using bit, it, yeah. That's a bit fucking harsh. It's got feelings, you know. Using it for uh, AI, AI with scripts. benefits. <laughs> AI with benefits. Yeah. That's how I get the scripts, isn't it? <laughs> well then, blimey. That's uh, incredibly wholesome, Ryan. 
You know what else would be wholesome? If I launched into a Shark Select's hottest new feature, which must be the real reason. Well, I say why we've got the views of that. That episode's not actually got out at the time of recording, but yeah, we might end up losing views because no, we won't. We won't because it's really good, Ryan. This is the future of Shark Select. It's a feature which I call the League of Cool Uncles, but has been nicknamed in the space of one episode Kunkle or Nuncle. (laughs) Kunkle or Nuncle! (laughs) The idea is. I talk about a video game's character or movie character or whatever that I think would be a cool uncle. <laughs> like, you know, he'd be like, be a cool uncle. Like, oh, yes, I'm going to go hang out with last week. I'd obviously Uncle Arthur Morgan. Like, yes, he's fucking wicked. He's not an uncle. An uncle being an uncle that you wouldn't want to leave around children. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a kunkle. You do want to leave children around because they'd learn valuable lessons from life. Yeah, uh, basically cool uncle or nonce uncle, innit? Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, Kunkel or Nonkel, Ryan's hit the nail on the head there. But yeah, this week's Kunkel, for your uh, consideration, is from uh, the very game that I rated Wizard a couple of weeks ago that you two thought was funny, because it had the laughing section, Final Fantasy X. By the way, I played back through the laughing section the other day, it's still awful. Uh, it's not aged, it's not got better with age, but less about the laughing section. I made to tell you about one of the characters, Orin. Orin is a cool man. He's a, like a good uncle. Let me tell you why. It's warning, this game, this bit does contain spoilers for a 19-year-old game. Because you have to say these things now, don't you? Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> let me tell you all about Oren, right? He used to be like a kind of samurai warrior dude, like a holy warrior. Like a, more like a warrior monk, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Uh, and his quest was to help a summoner on their pilgrimage across the world to fight to kill this giant old demon called Sin. But every time you kill Sin, it comes back 10 years later. But that's, that's the tradition. You have to take the summoner to... A certain place in the world, and then uh, they do a magic spell, summon a big old fine final summon, kill Sin, but in the process they die as well. So that's the trade off: you lose your summoner, but you kill the demon for ten years. Yeah. But Oren, right? He went along with his summoner, and uh, his other and the other guardian that went with them. And when the summoner died, he saw his ass. He's like, "Oh, this is fucking ridiculous. Why are we doing this?" Why do we have to kill a summoner every time? Why can't we just fucking attack the demon head on in, in some other fashion? And it turns out, uh, spoiler alert, the whole church that set this thing up is corrupt as, corrupt as fuck. Because of course they are. And uh, Oren has a big old argument with the character at the end of the journey who deals with the final summon and kills the summoner. And they kill him. But he's such a fucking badass that he doesn't actually die. He's dead, but he's not dead. Mm-hmm. Because in the world of Final Fantasy X, you have to have your spirit sort of sent by a magic spell, or you hang around and become a monster. Unless your uh, willpower is so hard, like cool Uncle Oren, that you just hang around still, as, as you were. And then he comes back to be the next Summoner's Guardian, uh, and he's playing along all the way through the game, like, oh, we have to make the pilgrimage. We've got to make the pilgrimage. She has to sacrifice herself. Fuck that, mate. When you get to the end of the pilgrimage, you're like, right, fuck it. Now we're going to kill the person that does the final summoning and do it ourselves. And he's such a cooking cool son of a bitch. And that's why he's, on, he's, he's in the League of Cool Uncles. Because not even death can stop him being a cool uncle. That's why. Uh, so, yeah, have you, do you guys relate? Do you guys think he'd be a cool uncle? Sounds like a non-uncle to me. Why? You're just saying that. Why? Just because I am. Yeah. Exactly. No argument. Cool uncles, best part of the podcast. What do you think, Stu? Sounds like uh, he'd be a bit too busy to be somebody's uncle. Sounds like he's got a lot on his plate. He'd be well, like, oh, me- can I go around and see... Uncle, whatever the fuck his name is. Uncle Oren. Yeah. And like, no, oh, I'm busy. I've got to take this summoner for a walk. Well, here's the ultimate twist in the story, dear friends. I've got an uncle in real life who used to live on a boat who looks suspiciously like Oren. So I think he might already be my cool uncle. But I've never caught him with a giant sword uh, or fighting monsters. So I can't confirm by the think... <laughs> Uncle Steve might actually be cool Uncle Oren. End of case. <laughs> what do you think of that, then? <laughs> I've, got, uh, I've got no input. Because I don't <laughs> you're shocked. Never, no, because you're lost for words. I've never played any of the Final Fantasy games. It doesn't matter. It sounds I've, a bit I've, ridiculous I've, to me, anyway. From what I've told you about his character, is, could, could you understand why my Uncle Steve... What uh, skills Uncle can he teach you, though? Hmm? Eh? What skills what? can he teach you? What life lessons? He teaches you not to be a crybaby all the time. He teaches you not to listen to the words of others before, like, without checking it out yourself. He teaches you that organised religion is usually a fucking joke. 
And he'd probably teach how to do some cool samurai moves or some shit as well. I mean, that sounds like that. That sounds good to me, right? Does he like you put your you put your hand on his shaft? He's not a uncle. <laughs> he's an uncool. He's a kunkle. He's kunkle. Don't worry, I've got some uncles lined up. I'll, I'll tell you when there's uncles. You do not question me on this. I am the fucking authority on kunkle or uncle. Anyway, you've got me fucking gander up now. You've got me raging. Let's get move on to the next part of the podcast where someone gets fucking hurt. Stu, I believe you have a new section that's totally original for us this week. Yeah. Uh, it's not stolen off anybody else, right? Totally original, not stolen. Um, and it's not a cheap rip-off or off-brand version of a popular feature from another podcast. I'm glad to hear this, because as you know, here, here at Shouts Life, we are 100% original, 100% of the time. Yeah. Even all our... Even the wizards haven't appeared anywhere else. Shut up, Master Fenric. Uh, so, yeah. Tell us about it, Stu. Yeah, so it's a hundred percent nothing like fact hunt from uh, Killer Rabbit, and is a completely new idea called Thick Hunt. What did you just call me? Yeah, the Thick Hunt. Wow. Are you hearing this, Ryan? Yeah. Well, I'll overlook that, Stu. What's it called? Thick Hunt. Shut up! What's it called? <laughs> Thick cunt. <laughs> right, okay. So, thick hunt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. all right. <clears throat> so, I'll give you three facts about three different games. Yeah. One of them will... Only, only one of them will be true. Ooh, I like this. Are we allowed to discuss between ourselves, or is it a competition? No, so that's why there's three... It's, you got, I'm, I'm guessing... No, there's no buzzers involved, because we can't have buzzers because they get abused. So... Ryan can go first, and then you can have a go. When you say abuse, you mean when the first one thinks of it quickest and buzzes, and then gives the answer first? Yeah. Because yeah. that's, that's how buzzers work. That's why we're not allowed them. Because <laughs> so it's abused. not abuse, is it? It's just using them. No, it's abuse. <laughs> how is then it Ryan abuse? just sits there and gets his arse out and ruins a feature. Yeah, so that's not abusing yeah. the rules. That's Ryan, that's Ryan not being as quick on the buzzer as me. <laughs> yeah. You can't accuse Ryan, Ryan having a lot less sleep. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, we keep him up all night, me and Stu, by stealing the covers and kicking him and well, snoring. Well, with you wanking next to him all night. Well, what was supposed to do? Not. The separation <sighs> curse. The se- separation curtain is so crusty after Stu's wiped his hands on it for weeks that it won't even close anymore. It's like a fucking gristly, crackly fucking piece of meat now. I'm anyway, sure it's wandered off a couple of times as well. <laughs> I think it might have done. You know, I think it might have become sentient. I heard it moaning the other day. So right, anyway, go past it. Game. It goes. Oh, it does. <laughs> um, first game is, um, well, just Morrowind. Uh, not Morrowind. Elder Scrolls. Staying on mm-hmm. on topic from last week. Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> first one. Thanks to the technology used largely randomly to generate the world. The Elder Scrolls Daggerfall is an absolutely massive game. It's several <coughs> times bigger than any of its sequels. In fact, it's so large that no one has been able to accurately measure it. According to Bethesda's own Elder Scrolls website, Daggerfall's game world exceeds that of real life size of Great Britain. That's over <laughs> 8,000 square miles. That is true. Wow. wow. Um... Do you not want to hear the rest of them, right? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, find it! I just know that the, the map in that is ridiculously huge in Daggerfall. Fair enough. What's the other ones, then? All right, well... All right, then. You, I'm trying to think best. Right, so you're saying that's true, right? What about you, mm. Craig? Uh, I want to hear the other ones first. I know, yeah. No, well, we'll carry on. Yeah, no, we'll do this, no, we'll do this way. The other ones. I am the quiz man. <laughs> I am the quiz daddy, but... How can I say See, if one of them that... is true and two no. are false when I've not heard the other two matter. yet? It doesn't matter. Uh, I'll say it's true then, yeah. Ryan sounded pretty confident. <laughs> right, okay. So we're both saying true. The next one. Take off Ur, the last <laughs> boss in Morrowind and key character. is voiced by none other than Super Mario's voice actor, Charles Marinette. Fucking bollocks. Nobody with any voice talent voiced him. Hey there, I'm Dick Arthur. It's me, a Mario. <laughs> Could be. What a load of saying, f- right? fucking cobblers. 
No, yeah, I think it was just some random guy that was dropping off a parcel. Yeah, it definitely was. <laughs> okay. Elder Scrolls Oblivion includes perhaps one of the most infamous examples of downloadable content, Horse Armor. The premium oh, yeah. DLC package unlocks a short quest that grants your horse armor um, and may be better protected against the hazards of Tamriel. Amazingly, according to Bethesda Pri- Vice President <coughs> Peter Hines, the DLC package is still being bought in 2016, 10 whole years after the release of the game. Hines called the persistent popularity of the DLC inexplainable. Hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's a strange one, but it's so, fir- it was the first DLC that was purely cosmetic. Hmm. But it's still being bought today, though. That's a bit dubious. Yeah, I'm gonna say yes. Okay, only one's true, though, isn't it? I already said the other one's true, haven't we? No, you can ch- we can change your minds now. You've heard all of them. All right, I'll change horse armor to yes. I'm sticking with Daggerfall. Yeah, you locked in. Yeah. Locked in. Yeah. <laughs> My final answer. I'm thinking of uh, who wants to be a millionaire. Yeah. It's going orange. The first one's true. Damn it. The first one? Yep. Damn Boom. my impulsive impulses. Ah. Well done, Ryan. Well done. Well earned. So well the earned. Super Mario voice actor Charles Marinette voiced Parthurax, a uh, member of the Greybirds, in Skyrim. Hey, mamma mia! It's a me, a Parthenon. Horse <laughs> armor was still being sold in 2012. Fucking hell. He's buying horse armor for oblivion. It's, it's, <laughs> oh, I don't get it. Don't why people bought it at the fucking time, let alone there. I did. Did right. you? Mm-hmm. The next one is Halo. Oh, Halo. Okay. <clears throat> so, sound designers at Bungie were always careful to include as much content as possible for players. In terms of both music and dialogue, while cutscenes played a major role in storytelling, developers also wanted to make the battlefield seem dynamic and alive, prompting to record more than 55,000 lines of dialogue for Halo 3. This allowed enemies and allies to have different levels of unique speeches and that, that could be triggered in a variety of ways. <laughs> I mean, the audio on Halo, with Halo 3 is good, but I... Don't think it would be that good. I've not heard that much alternate dialogue when I've played it. So I'm going to say false. I'm not saying anything yet. (laughs) (laughs) Madame Two Swords immortalised Master Chief in the form of waxwork. Due to Halo's massive popularity, while waxwork has been loaned out to various galleries, exhibitions and events over the years, a permanent home in Las Vegas, the seven foot two statue weighs an oppressive two hundred and seventy five pounds and took ten artists more than nine hundred hours to complete. According to the company, it was the first video game character that has been recreated by Madame Two Swords in their history. <coughs> hmm, okay. Yeah, and okay. the next one. The United Space Command, UNSC, was initially going to be called the United Nations Space Rangers, USNR. Mm-hmm. Mm. So there's your facts. Which one's true? Which one's I'm going with the Space Rangers. Uh... Oh fuck! I don't know. I'm re- I'm I'm in, I'm in, I'm undecided. I'm undecided. I will go with. I'll go with Space Rangers too. We're going Space Rangers? Yeah, I think so. You're both wrong. Shit the bed. It's actually it's actually gonna be called Space Nation uh, United Nations Space Force. Okay. The um it was actually thirty four thousand uh, sorry, thirty five thousand lines of dialogue for Halo Three. Yep. And it's true that uh, Master Chief is the first uh, Madden Two Swords waxwork this in uh, Las Vegas. I didn't know that. Oh, there you go. You yeah, go, that's your facts. That's crazy times, isn't it? Okay, and the next one is Sonic. <laughs> yep. Fair enough. So, his, the original name for Sonic, uh, before <laughs> he was called Sonic, was Mr. Go Fast Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Sonic is 14 years old. Mm-hmm. Or... 
the um, before Sonic was created, the original mag- uh, the original mascot was going to be Feel the Rabbit. Called what? What was the rabbit called? Feel the Rabbit. Feel the Rabbit. Sounds like a sex act. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Sonic is fourteen years old. Feel the rabbit for me. Yes, feel the, the rabbit was the first really? Sega mascot. Yeah. Feel the rabbit. Was, was I right then? Yeah, you're right. Hey, Sonic's well done, fifteen right. years old, and the original name he was going to be called is Mr. Needle Mouse. I remember Needle Mouse. Yeah. Well done, Ryan. Yeah. Well done. You're yeah. good at this one, yeah. That. Happy for you, mate. Happy for you. One of the original drawings was rabbit ears and they changed it to uh, Spiky Sonic Boy. It was the name that got me. Feel the rabbit. It sounds like something Stuart make up. Wow. I'm considered to be flabbergasted. Yeah, good. So, Ryan that wins a that thick one. cunt. So it turns out Craig's a thick cunt. And... I'll take it. I'll take it on the chin, mate. Ryan, uh, Ryan was majestic there, like an eagle. And as we all know, Ryan is an eagle. <laughs> so, uh, that was very good. Ryan, hats off to you, my friend. Yeah. So, that was a, a fun quiz. And just to keep things fresh, I'm going to follow up my final feature, which is called Who Done It and When? Um, and this feature is, much like Stu's feature, a quiz. But it's a wee bit different. I've got seven games for you. <clears throat> I want you guys to tell me. Year of release, and what the publisher was. Mm-hmm. I'll give you... Developer or publisher? Oh, shit, developer. Well done, Ryan. I'm glad you pointed that out. Developer, not publisher. You have to be careful, because some of these could be a bit tricksy. You need to give it some thought, okay? Tricksy. Now, you are allowed each... No, for each question... No, you're allowed to use once, sorry. That's how I best put it. Some lifelines there. You can have the first letter of the publisher once, mm-hmm. or you can have... Um, a choice, multiple choice between two years once to narrow it down. But that's all you get. There are your two lifelines between the both of you. Mm-hmm. Should we do we it? Have no, friend? We'll, do it. we'll do it each, actually. Um, you have no friends. Phone a wizard. <laughs> yeah, we right. just randomly oh. phone somebody. Okay, I suppose you can do it if you want them. You know what? I think we'll do it with buzzers. Because uh, I don't care about buzzers. Because th- these ones. Because well, you're not playing, so we can use buzzers. Right, okay. So what's your buzzer noises, boys? Ryan, do you want oh or oh, ah, ah? I'll have it. Oh, ah. I'll have oh. All right, then. <clears throat> so, game number one. Assassin's Creed. Oh. Go on, Stu. 2010. Uh-huh. Uh, Ubisoft. All right. Do I get to answer as well? Yeah, fuck it. Go for it. I'm going to go with uh, 2006, and that's Ubisoft. Right, well, oh, yeah, it could have been, couldn't it? Because, yeah, 360 as well before 2010. Now, let me just sort it out. So, I'm just going to type it as I go along so I don't get mixed up. <sighs> oh, shut up. Right, the game number two Sonic the Hedgehog on the Mega Drive. Oh, go ahead, lad. Oh, 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 even. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, I'll give it right anyway. <laughs> uh, Sega. Mm-hmm. And it was Mega Drive. Mm-hmm. 1991. Okay. And Stu? Yeah, 91 and Sega. Okay. Game number three. Halo Combat Evolved. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's always bizarre. You're a bit kind of redundant at this point, but go ahead anyway. <laughs> Who's going first? Ryan. Ryan uh, got the uh, the arbitrary bu- the arbitrary buzzer in first. That was uh, two thousand and one. Mm-hmm. Bungie. And Stu? Is it two thousand and one? Did you say the the developer? Sorry. No, it was, it was a kind of 2001. Well, what do you think it is, though? I say 2000 and... Ooh, oh, wait, yeah. Yeah, I think it was 2001 and Bungie, yeah. Okay, I think it came enough. out when we was in college, didn't it? <clears throat> Next up, Castlevania. 
Not Vady Castle, that's the Wizard's Tower. Castlevania. Oh. Go on, Stu. 89 and... Oh, fuck Konami. Oh, fuck Konami. Oh, oh Capcom. Me. Okay, fair enough. And Ryan? Uh, I'll go with 88 and uh, Capcom. Okay. Number five. Saints Row. <coughs> Saints Row. Tense this. I can feel it. Mm. I can hear your guy. Your mind's weird. Yeah. That's a fucking developer now. That's the question, isn't it? I know. Ooh. Oh, I know what it is. It's... Um... Oh, who's in there first? Oh, what year? What year? Well... It's, 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 2005 got... Violation That was it, yeah, Violation yeah. Volition, whatever Well, which one is it? Violation or Volition? Volition, then And what year did you say, Stu? 2005 I've got the same, but 2006 Yeah, okay mm. Question 6, The Witcher Oh, oh. CD Project Red. Yep. The first release, 2007. Okay. And Stu? I don't know what year. 2008 CD Project Red. Okie dokie. And the final question <laughs> for the game. Donkey Kong Country. 93, Nintendo. And for you, Ryan? I was going to say 93. I've got 94. Nintendo. Oh. Nintendo. Oh. Mm. Right then. So, I'll run you through the answers and then I'll add up the scores, okay? Mm. Number one was Assassin's Creed. Publisher was Ubisoft. Release was 2007. Oof. Question two. Sonic the Hedgehog for the Mega Drive. was 1991. Sonic I Team. Who said what? Who said what? Hmm? What did I say? You didn't say no. You got the year right. You did get 1991. But it was Sonic Team was the developer, and not Sega. What, even in 91? Yep. Are you sure? Because it went Sega. So. Yes. Yeah, they're the publisher. All right, Saz. So's... All right, you see. You see. You see. You see. You see now, don't you? You can't. Sorry. Did you know Question that that's the Halo... eighth of the cartridge? I can believe that, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, more than the levels did. <laughs> Fucking hell. Priorities, isn't it, really? <laughs> Slap a big sign saying, a blank, a big, a big kind of non-animated sign saying Sega on it, for fuck's sake. Fit another level in there. Sonic 2 had, like, 12 levels, didn't it? Yeah. No excuse. Question 3, Halo Combat Evolved. You were both correct. It was Bungie 2001. I thought you would be, though. Question 4, Vaney Castles. Ryan actually got a point on this one. Uh, Stu completely wiped out. It was 1986, Konami. Stu nearly got a point, but he uh, second-guessed himself at the end. Question five, Saints Row. It was 2006, Volition. What did I say? You got it right, 100%, Ryan. Oof. Stu got the, the developer right. So he got one for that one. Question six, The Witcher, CD Projekt, 2007. So Ryan got two, Stu got one on that oh. one. And finally, Donkey Kong Country was, and Ryan got one point and Stu got zero here, 1994, Rare. Was it Rare? Uh, it was indeed. All right, there you go. That's my calling in life. Random games release <laughs> dates. Work out the, yeah, work out the... <laughs> so the winner... Oh, bloody hell. Give me a second. Sign it up. Uh, it goes. No, it's just taking his shoes and socks off. To I have. It up, huh? <laughs> you aren't joking. <laughs> Six to nine. Ryan is the winner on round one. So I'm crying. That's the right victory comes out. <laughs> so I was going to put that down for round one, what the score was. Only for next week, you say. I'll put it on the scroll. What did it get two points for? 
So, I'll... never mind. Never mind. Move on to the next one. So that was that was <laughs> who who done it and when. Uh, and Ryan takes the crown for round one. Can Stu steal the crown next time? We will have to see. What was the total score you could have got? Um, well, if there's two points for each one and there's seven, 14 points. Nah, not 14. All right. <clears throat> not bad at all. You did all right there, Ryan. Stu, you didn't do too bad. You weren't too far behind. Maybe next week. Only a year or so out, though, wasn't he? And he was for a lot of me. He was very close. Very close. He was fucking edging. So, I believe that was ripping through our challenges and the surprises for the week, yeah? Yeah. I guess it's time. To see, to give the old crystal ball a rub and see what those bloody wizards are up to. <laughs> I really don't want to, but we have to, don't we? They, even though they don't know we're doing it, they'd probably kick off if we didn't, because that's how the wizards work. Mm. All right, come on then. Let's rub the crystal ball. Somewhere in the dark and nasty regions, where nobody goes, stands the wizard's tower. Deep within this dank and uninviting place, work shard select. Hello. Overworked employees of the wizards upstairs. Stuart, milk me. But that's nothing compared to horrors that lurk beneath the trash door. Because there's always shit games down there. In the dark. Waiting to come out. Oh, would you stop going on about Uncle Frankie? And nobody cares, Cumrang. I don't care. Oh, he's a mighty titan. Oh, he plays bonkers at the pub. I don't give a cunting fuck. Uncle Benny. Oh, who cares? Oh my god, you're I'm so boring! I'm going to tell him, boring. I'm going to tell him that he's going to come round here and take a big poo on you. Who's this, Mr. Cumrag? It's you! It's not what me. the hell is plug sound like that. I don't know what plug is. It's a, it's a stupid sport played by stupid people. It's a game of skill where you have to swing oh, a yeah. ball at some little skittles. What a load of shit. Go by, Why don't you go down and jerk Merlin off, loser? I'm touching that thing. I'm sorry. That shriveled up little cucumber. I love you, really. It looks like an old chipolata. Anyway, enough about that. How about we do what we always do here at the Wizard's Tower at this time of day and review some video games arbitrarily using our tiering system, which goes trash, meh, okay, good, thick. Shot and sitting atop like a great crown wizard. See how I remember this now every week. Mm. I'm quite proud of myself. I always forget because I'm such a silly head. So, who wants to go first? I'll go first. Go on then, comrade. Get in there. I shall review a game with my favourite person in it. Uncle Benny. Oh, here we go. Uncle Benny again. Go on then. He's in the game. Um, God of War 3. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, where you have to climb up some big stone lady called Gaia, who's yes. a, a Kratos' mum, and you have to climb up Mount Olympus to go and kill his dad, Zeus. Oh, I'm, I'm a bit scared of Zeus. Yes, and um, as you're climbing up there, you can see Uncle Benny in the background waving to Kratos and giving him a helping hand. That's nice of him. Yes. Um, so I'm going to put this in wizard tier because he's got my friend, Miss Jungle Benny. That's fair enough. Anything else about the game that needs a mention? Oh, I suppose the game is mm, okay. So I got hack and slashy, combaty game. <laughs> I wasn't really paying too much attention to the, to that. That's fair. I suppose if you had to rank the game, I'd probably put it in thick. Okay, so we're going for thick for the game, but wizard for Uncle Benny. Yes. I mean, he sounds like a nice mm. man, I, to be fair. Maybe I should meet him sometime and assess him as a wizard friend. So, how about you, Master Wizard? Yes. Yes. 
Uh, I spoke about this game a few weeks ago and then I promised I'd do it, the review on it, but I never got round to it, so I'll do it today instead. Talking, of course, about Skate 3. <laughs> oh, Skate 3. That's that game where you stand on a wooden board and roll around, yes? Yes. Yes. It's developed by EA Black Box and mm. Electronic Arts with the developer and publisher. Ooh. Yes, it originally came out in 2010. The year of our Lord. <clears throat> but yes, you play as the same guy from Skate 1 and 2. Your custom character, fella. But what if you change your custom character between the games? It doesn't matter, you see. Wow. It just it talks about what you did in the first one. It is referenced. Did you jump down a dam and skated off it? Magic? Yes. Wow, I'm impressed that skates have no magic. So this one, you... Want to develop your own skate brand. Ooh. And by doing sick tricks over Ooh. stuff, makes your makes you sell boards. Sick tricks. Yes, yes. by grinding this rail, you sell 5,000 boards. It's magic. <clears throat> I also have a floaty disc that I could do tricks on. I once did a grind down a fence. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> but yes, it's quite nice. The <laughs> graphics are good. Not talk about your disc anymore. No, that was rubbish. I got rid of it in yeah. the end. It All broke. Always talk about your disc. Set me ass first onto a picket fence. Took a lot of heel spells to sort that out. Let me tell you. Well, you didn't want to get off it for a while. That's because I bloody couldn't. I was stuck on it. There was splinters in my bum. Oh, we thought you were just enjoying it. No! How dare you! I will smile. Yes, I was, but don't tell anybody. Carry on. <laughs> so, it's uh, still a quite high demand, to be fair. It still retails for around about 20 to £30. Pounds. My, oh my. I know. Oh, me, oh my. I had me a dreamer. Yes. <laughs> uh, average score of 97%. Fuck 4. me. 4.6. <laughs> yes. But none of that matters. It all, all that matters is where we put it. Yes. In the wizard t- yeah. Never mind Metacritic, we're Wizard Critic. Exactly. Yes. So, I'm going to put it in the trash. Ooh, that's a surprise. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to put it... You jest! <laughs> I jest, oh. yes. I'm going to put it in thick. Why it's good, the uh, the story is a bit pants, yes. really. As is with the case with these that, bloody games. Yeah, the idea is you're just selling boards Rich. by doing tricks. Yes, we so could like do you, that. Yeah, you do this and you sell 10,000. It's like, why don't we just... It's just weird. <laughs> yes, well, we do the kickflip. Well, you've sold 10,000 boards doing a kickflip. It's nonsense. Mm. It's not even magic anymore. It's just silly. Exactly. Yes, quite. That's not how the economy works. Very well. I suppose it's my turn to review a game now, yes? Mm. Well, I'm, oh. go- I'm going to go for PS2 Classic. Metal Gear Solid 2, The Sons of Liberty. Mm. Yes, this game was controversial upon release, being the sequel to Metal Gear Solid, a game about a sneaking man called Solid Snake, who was a bit like Kurt Russell. And he snuck onto a tanker at the start of Metal Gear 2, and then things happen, and then for the rest of the game, you're playing as some complete nerd called Raiden, who looks a bit like a young wizard, but he's not. Cunt. He is, he's a loser, man. And all he ever does is... He's anime, man. Yes, he's very anime-ish. And all he ever does is whinge and complain, where a snake would have got the job done. And even his own missus on the codec is cuckolding him with Colonel Campbell. <laughs> That's how much of a loser he is. Uh, but, I mean, the bosses weren't as good as Metal Gear Solids, but they were still okay, I suppose. I like the Harrier. The Harrier was fun. Uh, there's a bit where Ocelot's got Liquid Snake's arm now, and therefore he is Liquid Snake. Uh, which... He turns into Liquid Ocelot for a time, doesn't he? Yes. And then it was it was that silly, even Hideo Kojima retconned it. Yes, I mean, you have to be very silly for Mr. Kojima, who is, by the way, a wizard, to take that particular magic move away. What the bloody hell? What next, people breathing through their skin? Anyway, that's what I have to say about the bosses in that game. The plot was quite okay, though. 
I liked the bit at the end when it all went a bit funny and he was running around with no pants on and the codec was talking bollocks. That bit was good fun. Oh, yes. In Metal Gear Rectum. Metal Gear Rectum. Yes, that's definitely what it was called. And then you have a sword fight with a man at the end who's got tentacles like Dr. Octopus. He was called Solidus Snake. And Solid Snake's still in it, but he's in the really poor disguise. And I know someone who actually bleeds actually believed all the way through that it wasn't Solid Snake. And I was like, come on, it looks like Solid Snake. It talks like Solid Snake. And he's called Pliskin, like Snake from Escape from New York. And that's why I give this game, overall, all said and done, a good rating. Because it's good in and of itself. But it's not as good as Metal Gear Solid. Or Twin Snakes, which I believe Master Wizard rated quite highly a while back. Ooh. Ooh. Now then, why don't you tell us more about this plonkers thing, Master Cumrag? Yes, so you get these little uh, skittles. Or, uh, yeah, that, turn that off. I don't want to hear about plonkers. No, God, they're so... I don't know what it is. They're so dull, aren't they? What's the other about Uncle Benny? Wasn't that just a random fire titan? I think so. It was just some, like, background fucking, like, <clears throat> titan thing in the game, wasn't it? Are, we suggest- are, th- are they suggesting that they know... Like background characters for video games in real life that they go to the pub. These wizards are getting fucking weird. I'll tell you what, this mm. podcast, man. Maybe, maybe we should all just pack. Maybe we should all try and escape soon. Get back to the real world. Good luck with that. Yeah. We can try, but. Well, maybe we should start formulating something. I've had enough of it, mate. Your cheeks just... clapped by the dummy thick man. Yeah, we, no, need to, yeah. we need to lay out a decoy. Well, that, that, we need to uh, distract him. That high stream isn't being used. We'll have to try and get some plans together. Yeah, they've not used the high... They built the high stream, especially. They've not used it since. It's not like they couldn't use one of the existing empty rooms in the tower. They, had, they insisted on building a new room for it. <laughs> oh, you know Skate 3? Have you yeah. tried um, the remaster of Tony Hawk yet, right? No, I haven't got it yet. Well, but... I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, apparently oh, it's it. sick. Yeah, I'm going to get it on payday. It's going to be fucking dead good now. Let's do all the classic songs like fucking Blood Brothers and Gorilla Radio. Mm. On the loop Power Man 5000 on it as well, yeah. Oh, yeah. The World's Collide song. Yeah. Which Melvin College never stopped fucking listening to. To the point where Stu had to go and take it off him. <laughs> Do you remember when we gave him a fucking secret recording device and told, told him to go and record the tutors for a laugh? Stu. And all he did was walk right up to Jim and went, just talking to this fan, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's not secret! <laughs> oh, yes, hello. Some kind of... Fanciful recording artifact, yes. Mm. Saving my voice. Hello, them chaps. <laughs> ah, Jim, what a fucking guy. Sorry, me and Stuart just reminiscing. <laughs> do you want, do you, in fact, do you want I remember the other day, Stuart? When we were told to bring some uh, foliage in for art class, and you forgot, <laughs> I just went and pulled some fucking privet hedge off the chair. Yeah, was like, what the fuck is this? You just been outside and grabbed that. It's like, no, no I'm not. not. It's from my house. This is my privet hedge. <laughs> <laughs> No, the best one is when you just got <laughs> you just put took some piece of metal off the top of a printer. Yeah. Because <laughs> we need to bring some random crap in. It's like, I've just saw you take that. It's like, no, I didn't. <laughs> Stu's bare faced denial in the face of all the evidence, like, nah, it wasn't me. <laughs> That's the kind of people you're listening to, people. <laughs> anyway, I believe we've reached that fortuitous moment at the end of every episode where we've reached the end of the episode. Which means I have to pass out. Pass on. Uh, I have to pass out. <laughs> yeah, I have to pass or, out. <laughs> just before, uh, we should give the patrons a shout out. Oh, can we? Go on, Stu. Shout them out, bro. Should I do it in a funny... Peter Jones! Peter Jones! Pixie Gaming Podcast! Pixie Gaming Podcast! Chris Price! Chris Price! Sam! So... <laughs> Can we just call him Sam Fisher from that one? <laughs> Sam Fisher! <laughs> yes, our beautiful patrons. Beautiful, beautiful people. Who I wish we could invite to a party and give them really nice food. Don't you guys wish that? Mm. Yeah, thanks very much for this massive viewing spike, listeners. It's really nice. It makes us feel that it's all worthwhile. And makes us warm and fuzzy inside, doesn't it? Does. Even Ryan cracked a smile when he saw that. Do the, yep. wiz- do the wizards know that about, about the spike? Or do you reckon they, they were just using homunculuses? Oh no, I hope it's real people. I hope it's real people too, because we've put, we've, we've put some good work in there, haven't we? 
Oh man, I'm very excited. It's nice to know we're doing well. So, any thoughts you guys want to mention before I, I, I set Ryan loose on the old outro? Hmm? Well, Ryan, take it away, bro. Oh. Yep. So you've been listening to Short Select. Oh. <laughs> you can find us on uh, Twitter and all the socials at Short Select Pod. We're back on YouTube now. Check it out. Yeah, baby. Yeah. And uh, also, you can find us on Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash Short Select. Nice and affordable. It's all very, yeah. cost- it's yeah. all very one dollar, two dollars, or five dollars a month. I think five dollars nope. is gone. Just one or two dollars. I think we're so, oh, yeah, yeah. We're so generous now. Because there you go. Get the yeah, just... for two dollars a month. Oh, I mean, come on, an episode. That's bonus content, bro. <laughs> bonus content. And you get a, you get a job in the Wizard's Tower. That is true. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've, we, we need get... to find one for uh, Pete Jones as well. Yeah, we need to talk to the Wizards about getting him a job, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure we can sort something out for him. Um, it's also worth mentioning once again that obviously check out the last episode where we interviewed YouTube Oblivion's impersonator slash musician extraordinaire Emmett Lafave. Because that was a really good episode and we're very proud of it, aren't we? Uh, especially listen to the bit where Stu talks about Sony Corral because it's fucking gold. Thanks all the boss and Bruce Stewart under it. So hard that he nearly cleared the other side but one of the wheels ran over his head. <laughs> and on that note, see bye. you all next time. Bye. 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 Yeah, bye. Yeah, bye. Bye.